What's up, guys? You're listening to another episode of Redefining the Counterculture. We've got a special music guest for you today. We're joined by the one and only MC Fade. How's it going, Fade? What's good? What's good? Appreciate you having me, man. Hey, no problem. No problem. Yeah, I'm man. I'm super excited to to talk to you about you know some of the stuff that you're doing. Um, so first off, happy New Year to you. How do you? How are you enjoying the new year? Yeah, most definitely. Same to you, man. I mean. We just been working. It's been super fast paced. Uh, even before the holidays, it was kind of like kind of just wanting to almost hurry up and get through the holidays because everything shuts down. And it was like right when everything was starting to kind of go up for us. So, yeah, it's been crazy. It's been super busy for sure. Man, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Um, so you just inked this deal with Invo Records. Tell me a little bit about it. How do you feel? I know that. Um, you know, for a lot of artists, you know, signing to a record label, it's, you know, sometimes they're apprehensive about it. Um, how did you know that In Vogue was just a fit for you? Right. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, I've been on the independent ground for a long time, man. So, like, with me, the most important thing was getting in a situation where all the work that I'd already done was still going to benefit me and it wasn't going to be given away, per se, in the brand and the the vision I had for myself. I wasn't given a control of that away. So at the end of the day, uh, the deal puts me in a position to push the product to more people, um, keeps me in creative control. So at the end of the day, it, it, I see it as a, as a massive benefit, a massive positive, even though I had said in the past I would never sign to a record label per se, but I look at this more of a partnership than anything because I'm not giving anything away. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, like you said, if you can use it, you know, to – for your own strength and, you know, use it to, to benefit you. I think it works great. Um, tell me a little right, right. bit, tell me a little bit about your new single. Uh, don't say much. I, I love it. Uh, it goes hard. What, what was uh-huh. the process like for the single? Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Um, it was super fast to be honest with you. So like, um, I had started on the record. I had, uh, my producer had, uh, sent me the beat. I had scribbled a hook down, you know what I'm saying? But I hadn't even tracked the hook yet. And, I, and as soon as I had the record done, I had looked and I was just scrolling through Instagram and I noticed the cap was coming through Houston. So I was like, man, I got to send this to cap. Literally sent it to cap. He was in Houston like eight days later. Um, I had only sent it to him with a rough reference of the hook. Hook changed a little bit before he got there. I tracked it the day he was showing up. Boom, he showed up threw his verse down and literally Cap's verse is almost entirely a freestyle. It was like recorded in like what? <laughs> max, bro, max two hours. Uh, no, no writing was done. Um, complete witness, like straight up. Like I'm the MC, like I write all my lyrics. I'm like old school, you know, pen to pad bar kind of dude, like in terms of writing. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy to watch. Like a lot of these new school cats are like that, and they're not fucking lying. Like the dude came in and pretty much freestyled the craziest dope ass verse, quick as shit, man. And like by then, the record was like almost done. It was like a fastest song I've ever done type thing. <laughs> Dang. So. Dang, how do you how do you feel? I mean, because I mean that's got to be a good feeling, you know, when you accomplish that, and you know, like you finish when you finish something like a record or a single. Yeah, I mean, most definitely. Like, with this one, it was just putting it out, and it actually, Spotify picked it up. Spotify put it on New Music Friday, which alone, in one week, showed it to 100,000 new people that had never heard my music before. So that was crazy. It's just on New Music Friday U.S., that's not counting every other country. They put it on, like, New Music Friday in 11 countries. They put it on a few other really big playlists. And Spotify, shout out Spotify, they're really, Spotify and my some other distributor partners I've had in the past really put the record on super, super quick. And that was the biggest difference to me is normally I'm used to dropping a song, getting like maybe 10,000 plays the first day and really pushing the song for a few weeks before it takes off. And that's when we dropped it and day one had over 200,000 streams almost. So. Man, that's amazing. That is amazing. Um, I wanted to ask you, so you, you've been basically, you know, writing rhymes and, and, honing your craft since the age of 13 what was it that drew you to hip-hop and just music in general man in the very beginning like i grew up in like a tiny ass town called jacksonville texas that basically shit probably basically doesn't even exist on a map you could say like it's it's tiny it's essentially in the middle of houston and dallas in the way of either way if you want to get to any type of city if you want to get to anywhere where you're going to see success like have a visual example of what 
success really is, in my opinion. You were going to have to go two hours in any direction, and I didn't have a way to go two hours in any fucking direction. So I didn't even leave Texas until after I graduated high school. I was like, I grew up um, Section 8 housing, uh, only with a mom. I had no dad, and obviously hip-hop was just an outlet of aggression. It was a way to, you know, let off stress. I played a lot of basketball, and I just ended up – I started off actually as a battle rapper before anything else, so – it was, it was fun, you know what I'm saying? It was something I found out really quickly that I was better than other people at. And, you know, I was able to realize young that, hey, this is a skill I've got. I may as well hone it, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. Tell me what what inspires you, you know, because I, I know that, you know, a lot of your, your music is just raw emotion, you know, and it, it's, it's how you communicate how you feel to, you know, the, the people that know you and then even strangers like me. Um what is it that inspires you? What keeps you going? Um, have you ever had to battle, I guess, writer's block where you struggle to, to come up with the words that you're feeling? Um, man, that's a tough one. So I think that, I mean, I wouldn't say writer's block per se. I mean, I definitely threw a lot of pages in the trash because they weren't the caliber that I felt like I was I needed to write at. So I've had bad writing days for sure. When it comes down to just overall inspiration man a lot of it's just the fact that like every day like I, I wake up and it doesn't hit me that I'm not where I came from like I wake up every day feeling like I'm still in the fucking hood like I'm not I'm nothing I haven't made any money I haven't gotten anywhere and it's like when you wake up from a bad dream and you realize oh fuck that was just a dream well it's like I wake up from that bad dream every day and I look around I realize I got some shit but I still woke up fucking terrified so I just I don't know, man. It's there. I feel like I'm always outrunning my past, and in that respect, I'm always motivated, I guess. Maybe one day that'll change. When it, when I actually really make it, make it, maybe that'll go away. But luckily, I still have that, so keeps me motivated. I hear you. I hear you. Um, I wanted to just talk to you a little bit about, um, you know, just working on this album. Um, so I know that the single is, is out. You can st- st- stream the single now. Um, what about the, the full-length album? Do you have a date for that? So the deal I just signed with Invogue Records, well, shout-out Invogue Records, shout-out Nick. The whole team is super dope. It actually was like a hard rock label, um, and I was the first actual rapper signed to the label. So I think that's super cool, and I, I look forward to that for sure. But the deal that we signed was for an EP. I feel like as Fade, as that stage name and that person being myself, being this this new version of myself. I mean, and let me like actually say that I've had like eight other rap names since I was you know 13 years old or whatever. But being <laughs> this new version of myself, I feel like I have to really, really, really. I don't know. I need to do a little bit more crafting of who I am and, and learning who I am now that all these things have happened in my life before I drop an actual full length album because albums are really important to me. Like I'm like a I'm like a Kendrick Lamar album kind of person. I tell the story forwards and backwards, and the whole shit's cohesive, and it's got a plot, and a fu- it's damn near a play. Like, that's, the albums, to me, need to be that way with hit records laced in them. And, like, I put out a little mixtape, and that's kind of how I view these records is because it's just really a collection of singles. It's not a cohesive story. So until okay. I have the time to do that, um, there won't be an album until I have the time to do that. But right now we're working on, you know, seven different singles and we're dropping an EP called Vendetta, which will be the preface for the album. So for sure, we're putting a preface out there. We're getting people, you know, a, a good preview of what's to come for sure. Hey, right on. I love it. I love it. Now, um, I know that you just recently signed with In Vogue. Um, have you talked about like a, like a tour plans, doing any touring anytime soon? Yo, that's like the number one priority right now is getting on the tour. So anybody, I mean, we're I'm 100% down to do a tour, like a headliner tour, but what I think would be best right now for both, obviously, the brand and my fans would be to get on a tour with someone else's support. So anyone out there who's looking for support on the tour, we're definitely looking right now, but I'd love to get on the road at least by summer, like ASAP. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, who would you like to, like to tour with? Do you have a preference, or are you open to anybody? Man, dream tour? This is, man, yo, so I'm like I'm such a fan of hip hop and like of all types of hip hop, and I'm not even scared to say that I'm a fan. Like I know a lot of artists that are like scared to say they're a fan of somebody because they look at it as competition <laughs> right. or whatever. Like at the end of the day, man, I, bro, there's so many people. Like Denzel Curry 
is definitely someone I've been fucking with heavy lately. It'd be dope to go on tour, open it for someone like Denzel Curry, anyone in that in that group of rappers like uh, J.I.D.K. I think it's super dope and killing it. The guys that have bars and really care about lyrical content but aren't stuck in the 80s, if that makes sense, is like, <laughs> is, 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 that's where I want to sit, man, because like, I love trap music, um, of the futures. I love the young thugs, you know what I'm saying? Like, I used to hate, quote, unquote, mumble rap, and I just, like, that was a huge weakness of mine being closed-minded. I love, I love all facets of the, of the, the hip-hop community. I just feel like, where I fit in is where lyrics and bars still matter, but you know we like the we like a dope beat too. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Speaking of being stuck in the eighties, I wanted to ask you, you know, as a, as an artist yourself, what do you think about just the state of hip hop, the state of rap, and and kind of like where it's going and how it's evolving? Because I know, like a, like you said, like a lot of MCs don't really like the mumble rap or you know the newer stuff. Um, but I mean, you yourself, how do you, how do you feel about all of it? Because to me, all of it kind of works together to make to, to make you know hip hop, you know, this multifaceted, multi, you know, just this this yeah, you know, the, I feel like the number one most consumed genre of music in the world now. That's now the number one most consumed genre of music in the world. You know, it's it's developed into this. It's hip hop is developed into a culture that shapes everything else. You hear a country. Dog, I've heard country music with snare drums that are electronic that I know could have been on in Hit Boy beat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, yeah. It, it, I think it's, I think it's cool, man. I love it. Like, and by the way, like, I feel kind of bad saying stuck in the '80s because obviously we're talking about greats who molded this shit, who made, who paved the way for dudes like me. Like, so it's like, I mean it disrespectfully in any sense, and I, I feel like the dudes that do disrespect the the old school pioneers of hip hop are are shitty. So I do want to clarify, that's not what I meant, but. I'm, <laughs> In that same respect, though, bro, it's like you can't be mad either way. If you go, I know, like when I first started listening to rap, we still had the song song back in the gap, you know. So it's not like right. you know, <laughs> the party music isn't new, you know. It, it it's not new. It's everything doesn't have to have, I guess, a storyline and punchlines and metaphors as long as there's something else about it that makes it unique and makes it different and, and in my opinion, just inspires a different type of energy. You know what I'm saying in the room. Oh, yeah. And I'm cool with it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I I agree. I mean, I, I think you know, like it. That's what the beauty of it is. Like you know, you can have those serious songs. You can have the songs with the narrative, the uh, you know, the concept, you know, so on and so forth. And I, I think that you know, having variety in hip hop is one thing that's helping to propel it to you know to being the number one you know music a, across you know continents and countries and so on and so forth so i, I think it's great I, it doesn't show any signs to me of like slowing down anytime soon or or anything i think it's at the end of the day i feel like there's going to be there needs to be a line drawn right like if you're going to claim to be the gold mc or the greatest mc of all time you're not going to be a trap rapper you know what i'm saying you're not going to just be a trap rapper i feel like there's a difference in being like an mc and being an mc that you know what i'm saying is outspokenly a lyricist because but trap music is basically pop music in a lot of ways in the sense that it is the most popular music that we're listening to. Hip hop is pop culture. And at the end of the day, like a lot of trap rappers may or may not write their own lyrics. You know what I'm saying? And that's like a huge issue with old heads in the fact that there is a little bit of a beef because in the beginning you had to write your own shit. Your lyrics is all you had. So if you don't have lyrics in hip hop and you're an artist, what do you have? But now, there's the melody aspect of it. There's the creative cadences. There's all these different flows, and there's there's so many different ways that you can be an artist and not necessarily, I don't know, be the greatest MC ever. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. No. It, it makes perfect sense. I mean, that's what I've been saying. I, you know, I just feel like, you know, I, I think you're kind of doing yourself a disservice if you, you know, totally write off, you know, quote unquote mumble rap or or the new the newer stuff, you know, because it's it all plays a part in you know helping to to push the genre as a whole forward you know right exactly exactly man I love it now I want to talk to you about legacy I, I know that you know you're no stranger to the game you know you've been working at this since you were a teenager um, and you're still you're still a young guy um, but you know let's say 20 years from now 20 30 years from now when you're sitting back and you're you're looking back with your family. Um, on just the work that you've done and everything, 
What's the biggest takeaway, or not even just your family, but just people listening to your music, what's the biggest takeaway that you want them to get from the music that you've created? I, I want to make music that, like I said earlier, inspires a change in energy. I feel like energy is super important, and, you know, people can call that a vibe. They can call it emotion. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, I don't know, the transfer of energy through words, music, picture, film, art, I think that's the most important part of any of those categories is making someone feel a certain type of way, um, maybe educating people on something they didn't know in terms of perspective, putting you in someone's shoes that maybe you never would have been in had you not heard my record, um, things, things of that nature. Like, I definitely want most of my accolades or accomplishments to be through lyrics or, you know, energy inspired by lyrics, if that makes sense. It does. It makes perfect sense. Um, now, I know that uh, I think – I'm assuming, but um, I, I want to say that some of your, or I've read that some some MCs that you know that you really you know really really you know have just look up to and have taken a lot from are like E40, Eminem, uh, Tupac. Are there any others that you kind of draw your style and your stage persona from? Um, man, I'm not I'm not sure exactly where the the E40 one came from. I do like E40. I am a I am an E40 fan for sure. Um, but I mean, in terms of the people that like I first started grew up listening to, like, cause it's it, man, I, my I've evolved in stages. Like, I was a pure boom bap rapper for a very long time. And, oh like, wow! <laughs> that 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 came from the big L, the big L's, the Cool G raps, the KRS ones. I listened to a ton of Jedi Mind Tricks. Um, Chino XL was the first artist I ever did a show with. I don't know if you're familiar with the Chino like Keller. He actually beat yeah. for Tupac back in the day. Um, right. Yeah, cats like that, man. Like the, the wordsmiths, the crazy word plays, the a double entendres, every other bar, Nas, uh, Rakim, Jay-Z. Like, bro, like, oh, like, yeah, that's kind of, that's the dude that really molded my, like, my pen in terms of the pen game. Um, then I went through a phase where, I have to say, I kind of recognized that I had to recognize what I liked and what I listened to wasn't the same as everyone else's because, you know, Spotify, Apple Music, all that shit, it kind of tailors uh, an old little playlist to you. And my phone would look like 1990, and my my girl's phone would look current as fuck. And I realized, like, damn, I'm out of touch with what's popping. So I had to go through <laughs> I had to go through a little phase, man, where for a few years I didn't listen to anything but trap music. Fell completely in love with it, man. Um, and like, yeah, like now it's just we're to the point where we're molding the two. We're trying to create a little bit of a different lane, throw some rock elements in there, all that type of shit. But to answer the question in terms of um, those rappers, I mean, obviously I've listened to so much Drake in the past, I don't know, four years. Uh, Drake, Travis Scott, a ton um, in those lanes. Uh, past those guys, man. In terms of current rappers, really Drake and Travis, <laughs> to be honest. Man, I love it. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Um, where can our listeners find out more about you and keep up with, like, your current news, like music releases, uh, upcoming tours? Yeah, most definitely. The place we're most active is Instagram. That's going to be Instagram.com slash PH4DE, or that's, like, super old. You can just pull out your phone and go to at, at PH4DE. With Bell Spade. Um, we're also on Twitter. I'm not as active on Twitter, but we're on Twitter. We're on Facebook. We're on all platforms. You can hit us up on any of those, and we're super responsive. We'll definitely get back with you. I- I'm like the kind of dude that when my fans are dropping comments, if there's anything I see, like I'm responding. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm active in the DMs. I'm hitting people back all the fucking time. So, yeah, hit me up for sure. Man, I love it. I love it. Fade, man, I'm all out of questions, but. Just wanted to thank you for coming on today's show, and I wanted to um, open the floor to you. If there's anything else you'd like to say to our listening audience? Man, uh, nothing in particular, bro. Just we got the Vendetta EP coming up. We'll drop a ton of singles. Um, any artists that are listening, singles, where it's at, put your music out there. Drop consistently. Drop a ton of content. Don't worry about what anybody else has to say about you. You know what I'm saying? Just be consecutive. Be consistent. Drop good music, people will fuck with you. And for everyone who does fuck with me, I appreciate you. Love you guys. And for you, my bro, I appreciate you having me, my man. Hey, no problem. No problem at all. Thanks so much, Fade. I really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, G.
This is Redefining the Counterculture on Witten Radio. Make sure to check out our website at wittenradio.com.